Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to, I think what feels like, kind of like a second home, Sheffield United. We have many a press conference in here. We had a great event here. Sorry? Are you, Michael? Sorry, I'm here. You're stealing my thunder here. I was so excited. <laughs> I was I was so excited. I just went for it. Now we'll pass over to the the real star of the show, ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Fame promoter, promoter and MC Michael Buck. Get it and everything. We are at the end. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the official uh, final press conference for a great night of boxing coming up Saturday night. Now, before we continue. I just want to say on behalf of Matchroom Boxing, Sky Sports Boxing, and DAZN, uh, we all send our best wishes to uh, speedy recovery for Adonis Stevenson, who's uh, uh, recovering and starting to do well. He, of course, was injured uh, last week, and, and we wish him the best. And uh, our condolences to the family of uh, three-time world champion Marcus Beyer, who tragically, at the age of 47, passed away a few days ago. And, uh, just wanted to say our, our thoughts and prayers to his family. So ladies and gentlemen, we are in the Steel City, Sheffield, England, a city of, uh, with a metropolitan area of over a million and a half, very uh, devoted, loyal sports fans, and as many of you know, uh, Sheffield FC is the oldest football club in the entire world. So this is a city with a great history in sports, along with just a plain old historical city. A thousand years ago, we had a castle here, Sheffield Castle, that was the home of uh, Mary Queen of Scots for 14 years back in the 16th century. None of us was here, except for, uh, I think, Barry Hearn was around in those days. But... <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a great city for sports. It's my fifth time here, and I'm really looking forward to Saturday night. Uh, on the card, I think we have a total of 10 fights. The co-feature and feature are for uh, World Championship Eliminator Contests. And uh, like I say, I've been here five times, loved it every time. Uh, a great night coming up, and it's all brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing. It'll be broadcast live by Sky Sports Boxing, streamed exclusively to the United States on DAZN, D-A-Z-N, DAZN. And uh, so fans all over the world will be watching and seeing the great fans here in Sheffield. So here to tell you more about uh, what, uh, what is on the card and introduce you to some of the fighters. Uh, you just uh, met him a few minutes ago as he introduced himself before I, I got to come up here and speak, is Mr. Eddie Hearn from Matchroom Boxing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Great to have you here as always. David Diamante as well, first class. Ring announcers, great setup. We've got production, first class. Looking forward to a big show on Saturday. Like I said, we've been to this great city many, many times. Feels like um, many years we've been coming here with, with Kel, starting out at Hillsborough Leisure Centre, of course, travelling to the US when he beat Sean Porter for the world title, defending his world titles here. Of course, coming here, fighting what is probably now regarded as the number 147 pound fighter in the world in Errol Spence. 25,000 people at Bramwell Lane. It was a great, great night of boxing. And seeing him today, I think he looks fitter, healthier, chirpier, more excited than I've ever seen him in his career so far. And a fit, hungry, healthy Kel Brook is a very, very dangerous Kel Brook. And I believe we're gonna get a fantastic performance from him on Saturday night. Let's talk about the future. Let's talk about Amit Khan. One thing I know is that Kel Brook has many, many miles left on the clock. And like I said, when there's hunger in his heart, I believe he's one of the best 147 pound fighters in the world. And he may even come in close to that limit on Saturday night, even though this fight is a final eliminator for the WBA like middleweight title with the likes of Jarrett Hurd on the horizon. I'm excited for this card for many, many reasons and I'm gonna explain those to you shortly. But first, I'm gonna pass over to our long time exclusive UK partner, Sky Sports. And I always keep saying that British boxing is in such a great renaissance period, but when we were on our knees, i.e. we, the boxing family, there was only really one person that wanted to help, and that was Sky Sports. And it's great to still be with them after all these years and still see them flying the flag for boxing in Britain. I'm gonna pass you over to Head of Boxing at Sky Sports, Adam Smith. 
Thanks, Eddie. Uh, I just want to echo Michael's words, uh, wishing Adonis Stevenson a speedy recovery, uh, and also love to the family of Marcus Byer. We worked with Marcus uh, plenty of times early on in the Sky Days. He's a, he was a great guy, and uh, we're going to miss him uh, hugely. Um, as Eddie said, we've, uh, we've been in boxing many, many years. It's my 25th year at Sky, and it was uh, started long before me as well. And, um, you know, year in, year out, we are there for the sport. Um, recently, we've done Monaco and, and Florence, and now we're here in Sheffield, back to uh, a place we spent a lot of time in the um, late 90s with the likes of Prince Nassim Hammond, of course, Ryan Rhodes, Johnny Nelson, our own, Clifton Mitch and Kel Brook was uh, just a young kid there coming through. And it's fantastic to see uh, how he's developed over the years. And as Eddie said, and as Michael said, this is a wonderful uh, fighting city. Really looking forward to being back here Saturday night. It's a great December, of course, New York uh, next week for uh, Canelo and Rocky. And then White Chisora at the O2, uh, a pre-Christmas cracker. But uh, let's enjoy this one. It's a great bill. Fantastic to see Kel Brook back. I agree with Eddie. He looks uh, in terrific shape and uh, obviously has got the... Uh, the fire reignited um, alongside John Fuchs now. We, we remember John, a really good fighter himself, um, and good to see him again. Welcome Michael Zarafa and his team uh, over. Looking forward to the main event. We've got some great stuff on the card as well. Uh, the likes of John O'Carroll, Anthony Fowler, Josh Kelly in a, in a really tough one as well. So uh, enjoy it. It's a special coming back to Sheffield. Um, we love it, and um, yeah, have a great one Saturday night. We'll see you there. Thanks, Adam. As I was saying, couple of reasons I'm really looking forward to this card. One, of course, is the return of Kel Brook um, under a new trainer in John Fuchs, but particularly three guys who are in big, big fights. Two are in huge step-up fights. Everyone in step-up fights are those three. But firstly, Anthony Fowler, who has by far the toughest fight of his career so far against Jose Carlos Paz. Um, Paz, a loss to Jamie Mungia recently, who's now WBO light middleweight world champion. Um, John O'Carroll in a final eliminator uh, with Guillaume and Frenoir, who will be with us in a couple of minutes, um, flying in from Paris, long-standing European champion. The winner of that fight goes on to automatically challenge Tevin Farmer. Of course, Tevin Farmer under the matchroom banner as well. He wants that fight badly. That fight is already penciled in for March in New York. So no waiting about John O'Carroll gets victory on Saturday night. He goes straight into the Tevin Farmer fight stateside. Kid Galahad returning after a great win in America, now mandatory challenger for the winner of Warrington Frampton coming up. Nowhere for them to run either. Kid Galahad straight in with them. Kez Asfak in his first step up on the card. Of course, 2016 Rio Olympian. And I think one of the picks on the card is Josh Kelly against David Avisian. Uh, David, former WBA welterweight world champion. And Josh Kelly now makes a major, major, major step up. I saw David on the pads last night with Carl Greaves. He looks in fantastic shape. Sparred many rounds with Kel Brook. I know it's a fight Kel's looking forward to as well. And particularly for John O. Anthony and Josh Kelly, three really, really big moments for them on Saturday night for two of their fledgling careers. And also John O. with a brilliant opportunity to challenge for the world title. Kes, we're going to start it out with you. Jay Carney for you on Saturday night. Looking forward to getting out on this card. You look in great shape and excited for the show. Long training camp. Um, I'm starting to finally, in the pro game, feel myself. Um, obviously, before I turned pro, I had a good year and a half away. I had a year and a half off. Injuries, sorting the promotional deal out, but now I'm in the best place in the world at match room boxing. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling amazing. A um, little step up against Jay Carney this weekend, and I'm looking forward to showing what I'm made of. You've seen your Rio teammates, of course, Anthony and Josh, now moving up the world rankings and some of them winning British Commonwealth titles, some of them looking to change for world titles in 2019. A lot of pressure now from the fans to make these steps quickly and a good win for you on Saturday. We'll see you changing for titles in 2019. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm half jealous of these boys right now because they've got a year ahead of me um, in terms of the professional careers, but I'm ready to step up. Um, take, I'm t took my time so far. I'm feeling great in the pro game now. I'm ready to step up slowly and next year hopefully get a few titles around the way as well. Barry, great win out in Boston. It's a good performance. Got the decision out there. And uh, now sitting really, really nicely as mandatory challenger for the winner of Warrington and Frampton and looking to finish off the year in style on Saturday night in your hometown. Yeah, it was a good win out in America and Boston. Top up there and Carl, top kid. 
Um, what can I say? You know, uh, did everything we had to do in that fight to win. So um, hopefully on Saturday I get this kid out of the way and then I'll be ringside watching Frampton and Warrington, 22nd. Obviously important to keep busy. You've you had a nice run now of, of fights. Yeah. Rather yeah. than sitting around waiting, just waiting for your shot. We know that's coming early next year, but important to stay busy yeah, and keep is. ready for that fight. It is, you know, I'd like to thank Sky Sports, Macho, Edian, you know, three fights this year. So, uh, you know, hopefully next year you can get me four fights, four defining fights. I'll be fighting for the world title, win that, and then uh, three big fights next year. Anthony, um, for the first time you have definitely a guy that's coming to win, definitely a guy who's mixed at world class, and I get the feeling you're really looking forward to it. I've got to say, Dave Coldwell turned down 20 opponents for you for this fight because they weren't good enough, which is nice and refreshing from a trainer and, and manager who would normally, obviously, at this stage in their career, look for easier options, but both you guys feel like you're ready now to step up over 10 rounds and in title fights. Yeah, definitely, obviously. They even know only in tests, it's not putting me on the ring and just dominating people like I have been. Like, I've had eight fights without being cocky, I've been broke sweat so far, so I've been easy, straightforward fight. So, this lad's been at top level, Box World Champions, he's um, ranked 40 on Box Rec, much higher than me, so he's mixed at a much higher class. And um, this is the fight where the show I'm about, I've got to be cool, calm, collected, and um, do the job. Obviously, looking to, to move up those world rankings, but domestically, I don't think it's ever been better, well, for boxing full stop, but especially at 154 pounds. People were talking about the Fitzgerald fight. Now a lot of people talking about Fowler v Cheeseman in 2019. Is, is Fitzgerald, then Cheeseman, a route that you'd like to take if you're successful on Saturday? Yeah, I'm looking for you, Eddie. I'm, I'm ready, mate. I've been ready all year for these fights. I just want to start like being big fights now. I'm just showing my ball because I, I work very, very hard in the gym, so it's not point doing all the work in the gym and having an easy fight where you don't show nothing. I want a, I want a good test and um, this lad's going to come to fight me. He's a tough lad, he's um, a lot more experienced than me, a lot more hardened than I am, so it's going to be a great fight. Thanks, Anthony. Mehdi, welcome. Good to see you, my friend. Our friend's from, from France, really. Um, are you translating? For, yeah. the, the question, obviously, a massive chance for both guys. The winner moves on to fight for the world title, Tevin Farmer. How are you feeling? Bonjour tout le monde. Alors, euh, non, mais je suis très, euh, voilà, très, très motivé et très prêt pour euh, pour ce combat. Et comme l'IBF a ordonné une, une demi-finale euh, pour accéder au championnat du monde. Donc il va falloir gagner cette, euh, cette demi-finale et on, on est là pour ça. Um, he said that he's uh, very pleased to, to be here in Sheffield, a uh, great place of, uh, of boxing. Um, when the IBF ordered this final eliminator, he was um, determined to, to come get his chance to fight in, in UAE, to, to fight for, for the, the world title. So uh, after two months, Camp is ready to, 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 win, to, win, to win. Is he ready for a war on Saturday night? Because I've seen John O'Carroll fight many times, and I promise you that on Saturday. I think that at this level, everyone is a warrior. So I'm a warrior too. So we're ready for that. Et si on veut faire un championnat du monde, de toute façon, euh, on sera présent. Um, if you if you target uh, a world title, you must be you must be a warrior. So um, maybe uh, you know the uh, Irish warrior, but you will know the French warrior on Saturday. Oh, very good, very good. <laughs> Jono, unquestionably the greatest beard in world boxing <laughs> right now. <laughs> Um, Indeed, mixed in with probably the greatest smile in world boxing as well and I'm delighted to welcome you to the Matchroom team, your first fight with us, you won prize fighter, you had a couple of fights with us, we put you on the Klitschko Fury uh, card a few years back and I'm delighted to be working with you and this massive, massive, massive chance for you on Saturday night to move straight into a Tevin Farmer fight. Yeah, thank you Eddie, um, I really appreciate you having me back, I appreciate Sky Sports putting me on these big bills and um, since prize fighter. I was an underdog for that, 
I stepped up, I won that, um, and then getting on Germany, I've been on fantastic shows with Sky and with Matchroom, you know, so I was excited to sign back with us. Um, and yeah, I must say, pulling this off, getting me this world title, this is what boxing is all about. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't work that hard and sacrifice so many hours in the gym, blood, sweat and tears to, to just fight Johnny, man, and fight people who I know when I get in there to, to fight that I know I'm going to beat. That stuff doesn't excite me, you know what I mean? I need to be in with people who is going to test me. And um, this French man is very experienced. He, I hope he is ready for the war because it was always love to go to war. <laughs> and I have to say, I'm ready for anything, whether we want to box. I believe I have a little bit better boxing ability, hand speed, power, and then, as always, I love to go to war too. So I'm going to drag him into all sorts of my boxing game. I'm looking to impress. I don't want to just win this fight. I want to impress. I want to show Tevin Farmer a little peanut head. I'm going to eat him alive when his time comes. <laughs> And uh, I, I truly believe the only person who can test me to the limits would be someone like um, Javante Davis, you know? Someone, that would be a dog for you. Me and him go head to head, and that will be a war, and then you'll see the true John O'Carroll going to war. You talk about experience in this fight. Fremois is clearly more experienced than you, boxed at European level for a long, long time. You think you're getting him at the right time as well, or just nothing's going to stop you on Saturday night? Listen, nothing's going to stop me. I, I don't really look too much into who I'm fighting. I just try to be the best me, the best boxer I can possibly be. And the rest take care of itself. You know what I mean? Um, for me, it doesn't matter who I face. I just look look at what type of fighter they are. We come up with a game plan. And um, yeah, we just execute that game plan and destroy. You know what I mean? The, my past few fights, I want to get them better and better every time I get in there because my level of opposition has got better and better. And every time I'm the underdog, I can't even believe I was the underdog for my last fight, being the champion, but every time I'm the underdog, I raise my game, you know what I mean? And that's what it's all about in boxing, is when you get these opportunities, you take them with both hands, and you just destroy anything in your path. And finally, you would be an underdog against Tevin Farmer. I've seen lots of backs and forth between you two on social media. We know you have a job to do on Saturday night, not overlooking Fremois, but that could end up being a big, big fight stateside. No, because Fremois is like a banana skin, you know? If, there, if we don't win on Saturday night, then there is no Tevin Farmer. And God knows I want to lay my hands on Tevin Farmer's little head. You know what I mean? So, trust me, I will be performing on Saturday night because at the end of the day, I have a job to do Saturday and I need to take this very seriously. But at the same time, we know I'm ready for Tevin Farmer. I know I'm ready. MTK Go will know I'm ready. And I want to thank them also for, for putting me in this position and, and getting me signed with yourself and, and getting me these big opportunities. You know what I mean? There was times I was actually feeling like walking away from boxing a few times. And then when I signed with MTK, he gave me that spark back. So I really have to take my hat off to them and thank them massively. But um, I have to say, Tevin Farmer is getting broke up. Mark my words, Tevin Farmer will not last 12 rounds. I guarantee every single person here, I am going to smash up Tevin Farmer. Tevin Farmer is a good fighter, but he ain't no Floyd Mayweather, and he tries to be like Adrian Brown and all these little muppets. Trust me, he ain't nothing like them. Tevin Farmer is, he's a good fighter. I'm not going to put him down too much because anyone who has won a world title is, in my eyes, that's where I want to be. So I can't put his buck way right for you. There's plenty of holes there that I can see that I'm going to poke him to bits. And I guarantee you, I break him up and break his head. Thanks, John. Firstly, Ho hopefully, break his jaw and shut him up as well. <laughs> so, yeah. um, firstly, Fremois for you on Saturday. IBF final eliminated to become mandatory for Tevin Farmer. It's a great, great fight. And another fight WBA international welterweight title Josh Kelly against David Avisian. David, welcome. Um, this is a, a big fight for you. I know that Neil Marsh, your management team, and Carl Greaves, your trainer, really, really fancy this fight. Styles should clash into a, a, a real war on Saturday. Hello, everybody. Uh, yes, it's a big fight for me. It's, uh, I like, sorry, it's my English not very really well. It's good, it's good. Yeah, I, now I work for better next time. Uh, I like this fight, I want this fight, I'm hungry. Boxing, I need fight. Is I'm ready. I'm David now today for Sheffield. Is David ready for fight? 
and tomorrow way day and after fight day and see you for ring every I will do my best is I think everything good. David, uh, jo Josh Kelly was a great amateur. Uh, yeah, doesn't it? doesn't have much professional experience. You've boxed at a much higher level than him. Do you think experience is important in this fight? Yeah, I uh, I speak true before. Not 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 listen for Josh Kelly is uh, before the fight. Uh, yeah, I listen uh, after after listen for give me fight. I see Josh good for amateur boxing <coughs> and a good starting professional boxing. I listen for maybe one month before Josh here for children and congratulations is good news. Um, I, I hope so everybody understand me. We do, we do. <laughs> doing very well. <laughs> yeah, it's good fight. Uh, I think 12 round belt fight is a really champion fight. Thank you for everybody. Thank you my family for every time. Good heart help me is Ladies and gentlemen, David Amissi with Sam. Josh, thank you very much. Um obviously we heard there you got a little boy now, plenty to fight for, but this is where it starts to get really, really exciting. This is actually the first time I'll be a little bit nervous. I'm sure the team will be. But really now, what is, oh, you won't be, but it's what it's all about. I mean, finally now you have the test with someone that will give absolutely everything to yeah. win on Saturday night against you. That's what I need. I need someone to come and really try and take my head off. Um, I know looking at this, I mean, so when I get in the ring and a lot of people want to take my head off because I look like this arrogant sort of guy, but I've got a, I've got a sort of a switch when I go into the ring. I'm not, I'm not the same guy outside as I'm in. So I feel as though Saturday night when I go in there, I'm going to put a performance on him. I've got love and respect for David Evanesium. Thank you for um, congratulating us on the child day. He's healthy, he's blessed, he's, um, everything's going well. So, um, four weeks since the last fight, so I've had a quick turnaround and I'm feeling fresh. And um, I'm just feeling too relaxed, I feel nice. Obviously, David's mixed at world level, you know, he was former world champion, ranked for a long, long time. After this fight, if you're successful, really, it's, it's straight into the deep end. And this is going to tell us exactly where you are in your career, I believe, on Saturday. Yeah, when, when, when this fight happens and um, when the decision gets made, then I think a lot of people will be surprised the way the fight went. I feel stylistically, um, I'm ready for this sort of fight. It's, it's sort of the typical boxer versus the fighter, in a sense. If it comes to fight, it's going to be a, um, a good night and a night to enjoy for myself. Look forward to a great fight on Saturday night between you two. It's going to be a, a fantastic fight. We move on to the main event, the final eliminator for the WBA Super Welterweight World title. We'll start with the trainers first. Blake Caparello, welcome. Welcome. A great fighter yourself. Um, tell us about this camp, this fight, and um, the, the job ahead on Saturday night. Yeah, thanks for matching first of all, and Sky Sports for having us on all the way from Australia. Um, the good thing about Michael, he comes into camp fit, and he's only a couple of kilos overweight, so we can focus straight on the boxing with him, and he comes into camp good spirits, he's come over here in great spirits. Uh, the English public have been awesome towards us. Listen, I know they think he's coming as an opponent, because there's big fights ahead, but Michael's not an opponent. He's coming here to win, like Cal did against um, Sean Porter, he went to his backyard and he took the title. <coughs> Cal Brook's name is a world title to Michael, so we come to his backyard and we're doing the exact same thing. I know speaking to Brendan, making this fight, you know, these are the kind of opportunities he's been looking for. Obviously, won the Commonwealth title, defended it, you know, won intercontinental titles as well. A lot of people believe that he's a massive underdog in this fight. No pressure, really, in this fight, and no expectations necessarily from the UK fans. He can go in, relax and try and enjoy himself out there. Exactly right, and like you know, that's that's a dangerous fighter, a relaxed fighter, so Michael's got nothing to worry about. He just got to go in there, do his job. He's got his team, family, all his friends back home behind him, and we've actually had a lot of the English public come up to him and support him, so we're looking to put on a great show. Thank you, Blake, and over to John. John, welcome, your first time up here, and 
the Kel Brook team. Um, he looks in fantastic shape, looks happy, looks ready. Tell us a little bit about the camp so far and, and, and what you've seen and what improvements have been made. Yeah, he is at a year, thanks. Uh, he's in fantastic shape. It's great. It's great to be a part of it, if I'm honest with you. But the way, when as soon as I got there, I thought to myself, well, there's odd little bits we can do and change, not change, but add to his arsenal. As soon as I got there, he just jumped straight, straight in board with both feet. So I say, yeah, what, what do you want to work on? What should we do with this? And the perfect thing with Kevin with this camp is he's happy. And he wants, he's been dragging me out of bed at half past six in the morning. I've been wanting a line, he's saying, get out, come on. We're going running, we're going to gym, we're doing this. He's, he's been there before me. So, with somebody like Kel, as long as he's fat, as long as he's happy, he's dangerous, man. Like, dangerous. So, this, this camp, it couldn't have gone any better. And I'm looking for a very special performance on Saturday. Obviously, after the Errol Spence defeat, you know, he, was, he was disappointed with that, it was tough to take. And you know, in my meetings with Kel, he talked about you know, one, two more fights. Yeah. But really, I see a different side to him now. Because, yeah. you know, talking about years yeah. still in this sport. Eddie, and, I'm, as, sorry, Bob, I'm exactly the same as you. Before I started working with Kel, I think a lot of people might have thought that. Maybe, maybe he's won, his two fights. Maybe think, oh, they can't fight and then that's it. No way. No way, this Kel Brook now, the way he is now, and the way he's going to be after this fight, is another two, three, four years in him, easily. And not just in the game, but at the top level of the game. And that's at 147, that's at 154. Whatever chances come, he's, he'll beat them, guys. This Kel Brook. Thanks, John. Michael, welcome. Um, you've been looking for this opportunity for a while. Many, many are looking past you, you know, the internet says you don't have a chance in this fight. I, I, had, I asked them to watch the Peter Quillen fight, where you moved up to middleweight and you gave him a, a great ride there, took it to him. But a big opportunity for you on Saturday night in your career. Thanks for having me, firstly. Um, yeah, look, it's a huge opportunity for me and the team. Um, you know, Cal Brooks done a lot, a lot of great things for the sport. Um, you know, we know it's going to be a hard fight, but, you know, we've come prepared. Um, you know, like, like Blakey said, this, his name's a world title to me. Um, so no stones been left unturned. Um, he's he's just a man, you know what I mean. He's got two arms and a head, and he bleeds red. Um, so look, well, the best Marcus Ruff is going to be there. Um, and, and like I said, it's going to be it's going to be a, a fireworks. One thing we know about you, you've got plenty of heart, and you're prepared to go to the well in this fight. Is that what you're going to have to do in this fight? You believe you have to go to the well to beat Kel Brook on Saturday? Uh, look, you know, we've been obviously studying um, throughout our camp. Um, like I said, he's a great fighter, but you know, we saw a lot of flaws. Um, you know. Too many holes in a ship, it sinks. Um, so look, we've stuck. We've got a great a game plan in, in place. Um, and look, you know, come come Saturday, we'll lay it all out. And uh, like I said, it's in God's hands now. But like I said, no stone's been left unturned. Thank you, Michael. Holes in the ship, Kel. You look well. A lot of people looking past this fight for you, but obviously, feeling fresh and talking about years left in the sport, a must-win on Saturday night, obviously. Yeah, I'm feeling very fresh. Um, if you roll back 12 months ago, I'd probably give myself about 12 months to, you know, before I hang them up. But I, I feel reborn. I feel real born at it, honestly. You don't, you don't understand, you know, like I say, an happy fire is a dangerous fire, and I'm so happy. We, um, you know, on, on training camp, like I said, we were getting all the hard work and the beach runs, the track sessions, we're having a good crack in between. Film night and at night, every, it, 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 it was like it was it was so it, it, the camp just went, was so smooth. We had the sparring in what we needed. You know, it couldn't have gone any better. And, you know, I, I am so happy. And I'm I'm so raring to go now for Saturday. If Michael Zarefa, obviously we know 154 <coughs> pound fighter, uh, won Commonwealth titles, Intercontinental titles, fell short against the likes of Peter Quillen, but very game and we'll definitely be bringing the fight to you on Saturday night. You know, to be honest with you, no disrespect to you, I'm not interested in what, what you're going to do. I know that I'm 100% and there's not going to be no man what can get in there Saturday night, what can deal with me. So I'm very happy, I'm very short, I'm very strong, I'm very explosive. So I'm looking to make a, I'm looking to, a, you know, put up serious performance on and I'm looking to a, give all your guys an early Christmas present. I know that it wouldn't be a press conference without asking an Emmy Khan question. 
Um, we know that he's obviously still the fight, but at this stage in your career with this freshness and this new mentality, it's basically any elite fighter you want you can be as a rapper on set. Any elite, I feel, I feel like a teenager again. You know, I could, I could weigh in at 147 tomorrow. I, I've got that buzz again. I'm, I've got many years left. I've got, I want to fight the top boys. Uh, Sean Porter's got WBC world title. He's there if he wants to rematch there. Errol Spence, I would love to bring him back here in the summer and, uh, and get the win because I'm, I'm an animal. Uh, you know, I feel reborn, like I said. I'm buzzing and Amir Khan is a con man. They should call him Amir Khan because he's a con man. He's, He's, had, he's mugged you off, Eddie. He's, had, he's, he's mugged you off. You know, I think. Not yet. You know, he, this is his last fight, big fight. You know, under under Matchroom, I thought that this fight were nailed on. You know, he shook me and looked me dead in the eyes at Tony Bell's last fight. Looked me dead in the eyes, and he said, "We will fight next." What 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 can I do? I've bent over backwards. I, I, I've I've said that I'll come to 147. We've not even we've not even talked about rehydration or anything like that because it's it's never got to that you know first of all we need him to come to the table and say yes it's on because I'm doing everything I can for the fans you know he's, he's turned his back on the fans he keeps saying that I have I think everybody knows that it's him what's running off. Well, Sorry, uh, <laughs> if, you, if, if you want my opinion, there's only one fight for Amir Khan, and that's what I've told him, and that's to fight you and not fight anybody else. But that's another story because you have an important fight on Saturday night. You have a guy that's going to try and end all your career plans on Saturday night in Michael Zarafa, and I know he's going to be doing everything he can to try and do that. Kel Brook is, I believe, still one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the sport of boxing, and I think you're going to see a great performance from him on Saturday night against Michael Zarafa. A huge card. So many other fighters on the card as well, and thanks to um, Adam Etches as well, Shaquille Thompson, just to name a few coming. Ad by the way, Adam Etches isn't fighting. I, I saw him. He might be coming in to fight a cruiserweight or something like that. Where is he? Thanks, Adam. And uh, Terry Harper. Loads of other fighters on the card as well on Saturday night. Some big, big fights, like I said, away from Brooke against Arafa. John O'Carroll against Fremois, IBF final eliminator. Kez Ashvac, Kid Galahad, Ansi Fowler in a big, big step up and a brilliant welterweight fight between David Avissian and Josh Pretty Boy Kelly as well. All live and exclusive on Sky Sports, streamed in America with The Zone. We've got David Diamante, we've got Michael Buffer, and we've got the Sheffield Arena. And I just want to say to the Sheffield Fight fans, thank you for all your support over the years. I truly believe this will be the last time you see Kel Brook in the Sheffield Arena. Because after this, I think he's moving to stadium fights, I think he's moving to big fights in the US as well. So let's have a great night. We've had so many great nights in the arena before, and uh, we look forward to another electric night on Saturday.